So, on this YouTube channel, I kind of have the idea to just express the pure consciousness as it is. Like, when my ex broke up with me, you could literally trace back and see videos of me crying and shattering. Um, and if you just keep going back in my YouTube channel, you could just see little snippets of my actual authentic consciousness as it is. Um, unfiltered, right? I don't like being filtered. So even as much as it's when I'm on my trip report channel, um, even though like I, I, the, I have no limitations with what I'm saying or what I'm thinking or whatever, it's just on my trip report channel, I feel a little filtered to only, <clears throat> I can only, I can only speak about psychedelics and my trip reports and all that on here. This is literally the direct flow of consciousness, whatever the fuck is flowing out. Um, the pure authentic authentic self like the pure essence of the soul itself the complete uh, real free flow um because i've been joining in these live streams for the past couple days on um, true life stories youtube channel um go check him out um booker runs the channel and uh he's been doing his thing just kind of putting bringing all of the psychonauts together right and he told me something that blew my mind that, like, I wasn't even going to mention, but, like, it, I generally just want to mention this briefly to, like, kind of put this into perspective for everyone. So, True Life Stories, uh, he's, his channel's starting to blow up, doing his fucking thing, right? He said that, so when I had my first YouTube channel, right, uh, I was just making a bunch of DMT videos and all that on my DMT trip reports, and, like, this is from, from 2015, up until 2018 when it got deleted. Um, he was explaining that he was watching my channel like five years ago, five, six years ago, he was watching my, my channel. And uh, he was uh, like, before he started his psychedelic journey, like before he smoked DMT, he was watching my DMT videos, as well as he watched this other Asian dude's DMT videos. But um, he was explaining that like, he would explain to people that there would be, like, these youngins smoking DMT and, like, just diving deep. And, like, it kind of just made him be like, well, man, like, I, I got this type shit. And, like, and he did have this shit. And he dived and had his own experiences and spoke about it and made his own channel, like, three years later and, like, did his thing. And then, randomly, somehow, I found his YouTube channel. I seen the link. I decided to join in because I've been watching his channel for a while. And then he tells me this, that, like... He was watching my channel before he started his channel, and and it was this mind-blowing thing that literally I feel like I'm a puppet of DMT, that now I think I understand what the thing is that I agreed to, that uh, there was a point on my DMT journey when I was smoking DMT, and it wasn't necessarily the first DMT trip or the 10th DMT trip, but somewhere between the 10th and the 20th DMT trip, there was like almost like this, do you want to be a part of this thing? It's almost like the actual trip, the female entity, the fucking something in the trip suggested, do you want to be a part of this thing? <clears throat> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's wake the world up. I want to do this. I, I want to I wanna be a part. And it was almost like, okay. And it reminds me of uh, Cordyceps Mushroom. Cordyceps Mushroom is a mushroom. It's They call it the zombie mushroom because literally the spores of the Cordyceps Mushroom are... Uh, shoot, you know, into uh, an ant, basically, and breaks the ant's uh, exoskeleton, goes inside the ant's bloodstream, into the ant's brain, and then the cordyceps mushroom basically controls the ant, okay? And then can tells the ant to move somewhere, and basically the ant sits there and dies, and then it grows the mushroom out of the ant's head, and then the cycle continues when the mushroom releases the spore or whatever, whatever. This is, uh, it's just the way cordyceps mushroom is, okay? It reminds me of that. That the psychedelics are doing that to us. That DMT did that to me. That So this goes into a video I watched uh, with Carpo earlier today. I watched a, a video of Carpo, 719. And he mentioned that um, about the cordyceps mushroom. And then it just had me put two and two together from... Like I was in this, uh, you know, I was in this stream. And it just put two and two together because... It's mind-blowing that we are all puppets of these substances of the plants. It reminds me of that, that meme I seen that said, 
are we really farming the plants or are the plants farming us? Farming us so then we can plant their seeds for them, take care of them, uh, we grow them, we, we fix them genetically to make them genetically stronger. We are literally the puppets of the plants. We think that we're planting plants, but plants are planting us or taking care of us so we take care of them. It's that thing, bro. Like, holy fuck. Because Carpo, if it wasn't for Carpo, I don't think I would have gotten into Kratom the way I did. Like, I probably would have tried Kratom still, but I maybe wouldn't have because Carpo was one of the few people I see on the internet talking about Kratom in a more educational, philosophical way or more long-winded way. Um, a lot of the information on Kratom was like short the benefits or short little whatever or maybe there's some or maybe there was somebody that wasn't necessarily philosophical to be able to explain it but Carpo was one of the first people I've ever heard speak about Kratom on a regular basis in multiple videos which then I got to learn more about it and learn more about the whole thing um and then like Carpo also got me into like I think I learned about ashwagandha from Carpo I think I learned about uh a lot of these uh Makuna Purians, uh from Carpo. Um, I don't know if I learned lion's mane mushroom from him or not, but I know I learned about cordyceps mushroom from Carpo. And like, so I tried all these herbs and they've all benefited me in my life dramatically. And like, then I ended up starting my own Kratom business and now I'm getting re ready to relaunch my Kratom business, but like also sell other herbs that I've gotten into over the years. But if it wasn't for me watching Carpo, I would have never got into the herbs like it would have just been a psychedelic journey and the herbs have benefited me almost more than the psychedelics like on some in my just day-to-day -day life right but it was the most mind-blowing thing that carpa was just a puppet of kratom that like carpa was literally just kratom's puppet or, or like these plants have an agenda they want something they think they they do something and they move through us because plants can't get up and walk around. But they have molecules that can attach to our receptors that can then influence us in certain ways, right? When DMT attached to my receptor, it influenced me in a way where all I wanted to do was talk about it. All I wanted to do was be like, y have you guys ever heard of DMT? Like, 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 holy fuck, guys. And it was that, that at that moment in time... I was DMT's puppet. It was speaking through me. It wasn't me. It was the actual DMT speaking its ideas or thing through me because it wants something. I feel like Kratom does the same thing. Kratom speaks its thing through us because it wants something. It's like the Kratom plant knew that they were going to try to ban it and make it illegal. It's like the Kratom plant knew. So then the Kratom plant, in a sense, gets its warriors ready. Carpo, and then Carpo starts this thing with like being one of the first Kratom YouTubers in a sense. And I know he probably doesn't look at himself as a Kratom YouTuber. I look at him as like a uh, like one of the first genuine uh, YouTube philosophers, like genuinely. Um, but it's this thing that I'm just mind blown, like totally fucking mind blown. That uh, when True said that, basically. And obviously, my ego's like, bro, shut the fuck up. Like, I don't ever want to... Because I, I didn't want to believe it. Like, it's that thing. And I'm like, I was in total shock. Like, when True Life Story was like, yeah, you know, I used to watch your DMT videos before I smoked DMT. And it's like, whoa. Oh, my God. Like, I'm, I'm doing something that I'm not aware of. Like, we're all unconsciously changing the world. Genuinely changing the world. Like... Carpo has no idea how much he influenced my life. Like, Kratom saved my life. Um, it kept me away from real drugs. Uh, the herbs saved my mind. It kept me meditated. I don't know how to explain it. It just kept me, me, through some of the hardest times of my life. The, like, if it wasn't for the plants and the herbs that I've gained a relationship with over the years. Yeah, even though I didn't learn about motherwort through Carpo, if it wasn't for me... Taking Kratom, uh, taking Ashwagandha, trying all those herbs, I would have never tried motherwort. I would have never got into those things. And then it just, it, it was, a, it's a chain reaction. It's the ripple effect. 
The ripple effect of me talking about DMT influenced someone else to talk about DMT and make a channel about it, which that person that influences other people and then the people that he influences influence other people and so forth and fucking so on until we actually change the world. Let's inspire, let's influence, and let's do this together. Because now that I know that it was happen happening unconsciously, I want to see if we can start doing this consciously. Let's start consciously helping each other out. Let's start consciously waking each other up. Let's start consciously realizing what we're actually doing because we are not just uploading videos to the internet. This is actually inspiring people to change their life. It's inspiring people to do more than we realize. I thought that I was literally just documenting my DMT videos because like, I don't know, I went through a cancer scare and I had no one to tell DMT about, so I started my YouTube channel. And I had no idea that it could have influenced someone else to do DMT. I mean, I guess I knew it could have influenced someone else, but I didn't think about it like that. I, I was so unconscious about it and so naive about it and so unaware that it reminded me of the cordyceps thing that, like, I was zombified. I was in a, I was in a hypnotic state from the psychedelics showing me reality, but then the psychedelics themselves have a consciousness of themselves. They, they're they alive in a sense, somehow, or whatever, and they wanted to be known. They wanted to be spread out. They want the same connection that I have with DMT, the same connection I have with the plants, the same connection, whatever, is the same thing they want with everybody. They want that with everybody. The The universe wants to reconnect with us. Um, I don't know if y'all have ever seen Futurama, where that fucking giant tentacle fucking thing was, like, trying to be in a relationship with their universe, but it's like, the psychedelics themselves are showing us that that, that is our giant tentacle thing. I'm not saying it's a fucking octopus, there's some people that think there's, like, octopus aliens or something, I'm just using this as a reference, that, um, the plants are alive, they're conscious, and... We're actually their puppets. We're, we think we're the master. They're the master. We think they're unconscious because they don't have a brain. We're unconscious because we do have a brain. And therefore the brain can be hacked by the molecules. And it just blew my mind. Because like, it's a chain reaction. The way that True said that about my DMT videos is the way that I feel about Carpo and Carpo's videos with like his herbal videos. Um, and it's not even just I, I use Kratom or whatever. It's that it possibly is going to be the thing that helps me get out of the hole I'm in. Like the financial hole that I have been in my whole entire life. Like I'm slowly saving now to relaunch my online business and like when I re when I launched my creative business for the first time, you know, I was making like a thousand dollars a month, which isn't much, but for for me that was amazing because I've been poor my whole life. So to be able to make a thousand dollars a month off of your own thing was beautiful, and I'm just trying to get back to that. And like this time, I want to do two thousand dollars a month, maybe three thousand dollars a month, and then I'll be fucking fine. But it's this thing that it's not just that the herbs helped or whatever; it's that these things actually. Uh, altered my reality and it's not just that the videos help people we're not just like we think that these videos are just helping people or that it's just an expression of ourself or whatever but we are genuinely impacting the world it's working and don't let anyone fucking tell you it's not don't let anyone say that you know, you can't change the world. You know, before you change the world, you got to change. Don't focus on changing the world. Change yourself. That is true. But as you're, fo as you're changing yourself, if you document it and you record it and then you upload it, you are going to change the world. Because someone will watch that video and you might actually change their life.